It's the most common home defense scenario in the country. You wake up in the middle of the night after you heard a bump or a loud crash somewhere in your house. Now, in this case, I'm already out of bed and I've grabbed my home defense carbine. I have a couple different options. I can stay here, get on the phone, call 911 and barricade myself in the bedroom. That works great as long as you don't have kids or other loved ones somewhere in the house that you need to secure. In this case, I'm gonna maneuver down the hallway to my kid's bedroom, barricade myself in there and get on the phone to 911. Okay, in this particular scenario, I'm using my doorway as cover. Now, I happen to be a long gun left-handed shooter, so this particular one works to my advantage. If I was a right-hander, either got to switch shoulders or lean out. Remember, this is why we practice this stuff out on the range. Another thing to keep in mind is backlight. If it's dark down this hall and I've got a lit situation behind me, I can silhouette myself in the doorway to the bad guy. You got to keep that in mind at all times as you're maneuvering through the house. Now one thing I've got here, I got my Surefire X300 at the 12 o'clock position on the rail. That way if I have a line of sight with my iron sights or my aim point micro, then my white light has a line of sight also. If it's mounted on either side or the bottom, at some point in the game as I'm clearing myself through the house, I can white light right back on myself and blind myself instead of hopefully blinding the bad guy. Now, remember use short bursts of light. You don't want to keep the light on too long because that tells the bad guy exactly where you're at. You want to scan a sector with short bursts of light and then maneuver from there. And last but not least, nobody knows the house better than you. So use the ambient light and the layout of the house to your advantage. If you know a particular area of the house is clear from the doorway, then as you maneuver forward, you're going to be dressing down on the area that you can't see that's not clear. All right, here we go. Okay, in this location, I'm going to talk to you about two things. One is white light. In this case, this particular area of the living room is so well lit, I don't have to use my white light. Remember, we use white light to positively locate and identify any potential threat. If I use a white light here, all I'm going to do is tell the bad guy right where I'm at. The other thing is, is dead space. I have dead space as I maneuver down the hall that I need to be concerned about. One is around this entertainment center and around the couch. So as I move forward to the kids' room, I need to take that into account in case there's a threat hiding there. All right, here we go. Now it's time to talk about mirrors the epitome of a double-edged sword when it comes to clearing your house. Okay, worst case scenario with a mirror is you flash light directly into it and you end up blinding yourself. Best case scenario is you use the reflection from a mirror to help you clear the room without actually occupying the room. Where this comes into play is your rehearsals. You have to go through the house with your handgun, white light, and long gun white light, figure out where your mirror's at and use them to your best advantage. Here we go. Okay, last door we need to clear before I get into the kid's bedroom is the kitchen. Now keep in mind, that's where I need to go because I need to go in there and secure the bedroom, make sure I search it, and get on the phone to 911. I want to clear as much of the room as possible from the doorway. I don't actually have to physically occupy it. Just want to make sure I don't leave any dead space behind that could come back to haunt me. Get into the kids, make sure you secure them, get on the phone to 911. Now, let's go through the whole scenario again with a handgun and a handheld white light and talk about a few particulars with that setup. Now we're going to go through the exact same scenario but with a handheld light and a pistol. In this case, a Surefire Executive Elite and a Wilson 1911. A couple things here. I want to make sure my white light, if at all possible, is set up for momentary on off. And 1911 or your handgun needs to have night sights. You need to have the ability to aim the gun and engage a bad guy without having the white light to illuminate your sights. All right, let's take it down.
Okay, as far as taking this corner here with a handheld light, you gotta figure out how you're gonna hold the light. If I go Harry's technique, like this, I'm gonna end up shielding myself with the corner and illuminate myself back with the white light. That's why I switched over to what I call the push-pull. I grab it by the bezel and I push it against the palm of the hand. Once again, it looks like this when I get into position. You can also use a cigar technique where you grab it between your two fingers and come in like this. Any of those work. However, depending on you have a right or left hand corner, depends on the technique you use. Also, I like a smaller light like the Executive because it's easier to manage versus a bigger light and it still has plenty of power. Remember, if I can illuminate all the way down the end of the hall, that's all I need. I don't need something that's gonna blind you. All right, let's move to the next corner. Now the same rule applies here as with the long gun. Really don't need to use the white light to illuminate this area to locate and identify. So what I wanna do is think about dead space and maneuvering down the hall. Also, kind of when you're in this travel mode, so to speak, get the white light in an area you're the most comfortable with. For me, it's the Harry's technique. There's pros and cons with all three techniques, but for me, the most comfortable across the spectrum is the Harry's. Same rule applies with the white light and handgun as it does the long gun and mirrors. Got to be careful because it'll work for you and work against you. This is a good time to bring up two alternate methods of using the white light. One has some merit, one I don't think has any merit. Well, first one is holding it all the way up off to the side and aiming and coordinating the two, the pistol and the white light. The problem with this technique is most bad guys are right-handed shooters and if they jerk the trigger with a handgun, guess where your head's at? The other technique I am dead set against is the neck hold. This derived from law enforcement officers like state troopers and whatnot, interviewing somebody at night or checking their driver's license per se, and then having to retreat from a situation with the white light up here. And I understand that, but the problem is, of course, when you turn your white light on up by your head, where do you think the bad guy's gonna be aiming at? That's the one technique I don't like more than any others. In addition to the fact, if you bring your pistol out and do that, it backlights your gun. It's very difficult to shoot that way. My recommendation is you wanna stay away from the neck hold altogether. Time to move to the next doorway. All right, same rule of thumb applies here as with the carbine. No need to occupy the kitchen before you go to the kids' room. Now, let me wrap this up. First off, you gotta have a white light if you're gonna clear your house. Whether it's weapon mounted or handheld, it has to be a quality weapon light, all right? That's where Surefire comes in. They're definitely the industry leader on this and they're the ones that I recommend first and foremost. If you're gonna use a long gun, have some kind of optic on it, some kind of red dot sight, of course, I prefer aim point. If you're gonna use a pistol, use the one that you're the most comfortable with. That's the most important factor, the one that you feel that you can shoot the best. And last but not least, you need to have a plan. You need to have a plan to hunker down in your bedroom and call 911. You need to have a plan to clear your house. And you also need to have a plan to evacuate so you can grab your kids and your wife and Diddy Mao in case there's a lot of people in your house. All right, and remember, rehearse, practice. You don't want to be doing this for real when you hear a bump in the night for the first time.